Hi there traders, welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris, thanks for joining us. Today, we'll be taking a look at high, uh, the finding uh, actually setups with high probability. So we already had an introduction last week where you you know got a, uh, an idea which areas I like to think about high probability setups. I already mentioned a, a wide range of things that help me find those. Today I wanted to zoom in, focus a little bit on candles and patterns rather than mentioning five or six different techniques wanted to focus on one specific technique and uh, dive into that topic but before we do that though today these two disclaimers i need to explain to you uh, as always first of all the fact that the webinar is shown to a global audience but therefore is not necessarily suitable for everyone please visit admiralmarketsglobal.com select your country or residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you. Second of all, also please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of a financial advisor for more information on that. This uh, webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty. So, before we kick off this webinar, please let me introduce you to Admiral Markets. Maybe uh, you are here for the first time and uh, you haven't seen the website, maybe, for instance. So, check it out here, AdmiralMarkets.com. Why should you check it out? Well, there are a lot of things you can learn through this page regarding analytics. A lot of tabs here. I know that's a little bit maybe overwhelming for you when you start out. But basically, the top row has analysis. Then you have a lot of useful tools like, uh, for instance, market sentiment, market heat map, auto charges, calendar, but also very, well, at least in my view, uh, very wide topic uh, of articles here in the blog. Education, you have more stuff going on here with more articles and more courses at the bottom. And uh, that's all regarding analytics education only. On the left, you have more practical things like software, instruments and how to start trading so that's basically how the website is broken down into bits so that uh, you can check it out after this webinar all right with regard to the market that's what we're going to do right now though we're going to take a look what's going on as well as look at how candles in patterns could be useful for better trading so it's a bit of, bit of a mixture here with regard to strategy and looking at the, the live market so before we start, anyone may be interested in a particular currency pair. I really uh, don't have any preference necessarily. I, I, if you have something in, in mind, I gladly take a look at that pair. Of course, today, pound falling nicely, yen um, basically strengthening and uh, making some upside. So those were, I think, were probably the most interesting ones. I think the pound has more left in it. I think the New Zealand might be well set up for later, but there is an interest rate announcement, so it could be good to wait for that first. Um, what else? I think that that was basically the trend. I mean, the Euro, Euro had some nice down bearish momentum yesterday, kind of stalling at this moment, right? So didn't get the follow through. I think that's because the pound kind of overtook its, its role at this moment. So pound is, is weakening. And it is something that uh, I like the pound yen the most myself, but I also thought that the pound odd and pound New Zealand looked bearish to me. And, um, you know, it definitely, it was moving up, but there are a couple of things I didn't like of the upside, which is the fact that on both time frames there was daily divergence here between these tops. We had a sharp move down. Which is, which is indicating impulse and maybe slightly corrective the upside compared to the downside. So those two things were pretty strong in my view. And hence, I thought that there could be a, a turn on the pound odd, uh, pound New Zealand and pound yen. I like the pound yen the most myself, uh, although I was already in a yen, the odd yen. Um, uh, I did see also the dollar yen moving down because of the fact that from my point of view, it was breaking to the downside, right? We had already a substantial down day here, a big daily bearish pin bar, 
we had a little bit of bounce that got rejected, right? And we broke below basically with this candle in my view. So that, from my point of view, indicated a, a bigger, at least some kind of correction. So pound looked weak and yen was looking strong. So pound yen, I think, was one of the better ones today. Um, but, uh, you know, this, this pound story was basically valid for um, all of them. Pound is going to breaking this channel, for instance. And uh, in my view, the breakout candle was already here on this candle. So, yeah, a good follow through on those pounds. Is it, with regard to the future, still tradable? I think yes. I don't think it's good right now because it has already moved 160 pips or 200 pips. I don't know exactly, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And uh, therefore, think that some kind of flag or correction is, is better for the moment. So that would be on the lower time frame, maybe a 30-minute chart. You can see hefty fall here on this, for, for instance, this pound New Zealand. And, I, you know, it doesn't make sense to short it all the way here. All right. It's moved so much, in this case, from top to bottom to 20. You know, we need to see some kind of correction, some kind of pattern where price is, is making basically a pause, catching its breath. And then I think there could be one more pound weakness push, in my view. All right. Um, so, yeah, from my point of view, this was a pattern, triangle pattern that got broken to the, to the upside. We had divergence on this time frame. We had divergence on the daily chart. And uh, you can see that if you use candles like this one or maybe the one-hour chart, you know, they, they indicate good information about breakouts and bounces. This is a breakout. This is a breakout. And... Um, this is a breakout. These are, these are, you know, maybe counter trend breakouts, but still triangles and up it went. And this finally breaking the counter trend trend line for a downside. So, yeah, candles in patterns very important. Now, candlesticks themselves will not be everything either. You have to find the context. Some context. Someone was write to me an email about the pound daily chart saying there was a candle close near the high. And there was certainly a Monday was a good candle, right? But yesterday was more of a doji. It did close near the high, but you have to also understand the context, which in fact, you know, which in fact it is a doji candle, which is an indecision candle yesterday. And if it's a doji, it really could break both ways. It, it, doji typically is just a warning. It's just indecision. It, you can get some info out of it to say that this is, I think, not necessarily, it could be a bullish continuation signal. And I understand, you know, the person's thoughts on that. All in all, though, the pound, be aware, is just in a very big range, very choppy, corrective and respect it to 50 fib and if you look at the four hour context it was looking more bearish due to the fact that it was below the long to moving average it um, made a correction like this moved down and it looked more like weakness to me from this point of view that was not necessarily visible in the daily chart so that's a bit difficult sometimes that's why multiple time frame analysis is good but you know candlestick patterns generally provide a lot of info but it never hurts to look at multiple time frames. It never hurts to look at the bigger picture and the market structure, understand uh, basically what the position is of price. Because what we're really looking for is candlesticks to give us a confirmation of a pattern break or a pattern bounce. And uh, we want to be kind of on guard that we you know, don't necessarily only do an, the analysis just looking at, let's say, one daily candle, right? That's not enough. We, we gotta, it's better to, to, to do a bit more context, get more understanding.
in general. All right, so Pao Yen, let me add one thing though. Here too, looking for, look, it doesn't make sense to short it here, right? It moved way past what you would normally expect of a move in a day, even on the pound yen. Uh, 120 pips, it could move 20, 30 more, I'm not saying. You know, I mean, it definitely moved even more on the pound New Zealand. But is it worth taking a trade here, putting the stop loss all the way here for another 20, 30 pips? No. It's better to wait for a correction. On a 15-minute chart, even, right? Something like this, maybe over the next few hours, I don't know, four or five hours from now, finishes the bear flag, and then wait for the break and aim for something not too far away. Maybe something like 148.25 ish, 148, 147.75, not much more. Something like this correction, continuation. All right. Now, anyone trading the pound yen, for instance, like this, if you're looking at a pattern of these trend lines, what do you see? Oh. Descending wedge, right? Plus, we had a break of this trend line. All right. That's about it. So, Sorry, uh, there we go. So what do we have here? Corrective channel to the upside, momentum to the downside. We know that pound is running into some, some resistance. We know that yen is looking strong. So you know dollar yen breaking below support. You see, you see pound having divergence on the daily charts with, against us, against New Zealand. So we know that the, this, this rally to the upside could be very limited and it doesn't have to be a trend continuation because of the daily divergence here this could easily be an a b c pattern all right so with that in mind pang yen very interesting so and if you look at the you know four hour chart for instance and you're looking for a breakout you got a good breakout candle there but if you're looking for maybe a more conservative breakout you could use this trend line like this there you go And you could take this breakout candle even. So there are multiple breakouts here on the four hour chart, here on the four hour chart, on the hourly chart. Uh, I think, let's take a look here or even here, here, here. So those could have been setups. Those are setups you know, when we had the break of the pattern. Now price has moved way far away from that pattern. It's better to wait for a new pattern. But I think we can get it on the pound. I think that there's a decent chance we can get continuation. You never know. But if we do get it, some flag like this, that would be sweet. Euro yen, what I'm looking for basically on the euro yen, and I'm not sure if I'm going to get it, but it would be nice if we get some kind of break, pullback continuation. So I would like to see a push really below 130, before shorting it. For the moment, I entered a euro yen up in here, and I have some profit and the rest at break even. I might move the stop loss to above these tops in here and just hope that it breaks, continues breaks, pullbacks, and continues. If it does break, pullback, I might think about adding at the pullback. Trying to get a second. Um, you know, second continuation of this euro yen. Break of what pattern, which, which currency was I looking at? I'm not sure when you wrote this. Break of the daily support, basically, if you're looking at this euro yen. So here we see, so it's, uh, it's, this is not necessarily a break of the pattern, it's more a break of support. It could be a pattern in the sense that it is a descending wedge, for instance, right? Or it is a consolidation. A triangle, that was maybe the, the pound yen. 
So there were a couple of patterns here. There was a rising wedge here, like this, in my view. But the rising wedge is, is maybe a little bit questionable, uh, you know, because of the fact that you could see it channeled too. All right. So this break may be not much of a pattern, but more break of the channel. What I think was a clear pattern was this one. Here was an ascending, ascending wedge. There we go. Here, triangle or ascending wedge. And it was maybe a smaller triangle if you do it like this. Yeah, there were a lot of trend lines. <laughs> so I can imagine uh, it kind of disappeared in, in, all the, in, in the sea of trend lines there. So these, these patterns are really good for, for trading and help you know, spot the, the opportunities. So for the moment, I, I don't think that this is a particular good spot for, for the Palm Yen. All right, uh, let's see, any other questions? Thank you, Angel, pretty, pretty good. And we'll take a look at gold, of course. And Adyen, gold, Adyen, we can do that. Well, um, chart, chart patterns, yeah, it's basically a question of waiting for the breakout. We don't know which side it, uh, it will break out. So you can try to trade a bounce, of course, within the triangle or within the pattern. Uh, that is tradable. For instance, um, you know, you could see this as a corrective channel pattern. Uh, and if you trade bounces within at the bottom of the channel, you do have a good trade, a few good trades to the upside, right? So waiting for some candlestick reaction, for instance, to this support trend line indicates the bounce, whereas a, a push below it is the break. So my point is that we want to take a look at candlesticks as they approach the pattern uh, break or bounce spot. Right here, we might see a little bit of a, a flag like this, but we got the break to the upside. So what I really like is if the, if the pattern is small like this, it doesn't make sense to trade a bounce. It's better to wait for a break. But if we're trading a big pattern on a daily chart, there's plenty of space to trade a bounce because there's still a lot of space to the, to the opposite side of that pattern. On a smaller time frame, it's better to wait for a break typically, which, which happened here. So typically, that's why I wanted to focus on today is, is the breakout candles as they, as they push through um, patterns. So what is, what is a good breakout candle is something like this, for instance. Uh, this is fine too, typically it's okay. And typically you should see a fast move down. It shouldn't be too much pause there. And if it's pausing too much, then you might want to get out. For instance, the pound dollar yesterday, I had a breakout, but I got out because I was taking this break, this break candle. And we had some follow through. I was up a few pips, but then I saw this big bullish candle. So I put the stop loss just above it. All right, so this was a break, but didn't go anywhere. Uh, it really depends on the on, on the pair and time frame. So what I do is just I look at the re relative size of the breakout candle compared to the last candles, right? And if that size is average or, or large, it's okay. If it's small, then it's not okay. And, it, and the candle's close should not be too far off the high or low. So it, it does really depend on, on the volatility of the of the pair and the candle. Uh, the pair and the time frame. All right, let's take a look at gold and then Adyen. Adyen the gold, sorry, is finally moving up. It's really took a lot of time 
was already bullish, you know, down in here as price I thought was making a potential A, B, C, and uh, seems to be breaking to the upside. Finally, uh, very choppy, but now challenging the top of resistance. If it does push through it, could be a good breakout bull flag continuation on this pound odd. Uh, sorry, on this gold. Excuse me. Uh, good daily candle close above the resistance channel. I think that the target would be 61.8 fib. There could be, well, the first target is really roughly equal to the top, but if it breaks above that, it could go to the 61.8 because it could be a triangle like this too. Yeah, gold definitely bounced a lot of times the resistance. It's been a headache for it to move up. And uh, that's not easy trading. Um, and now it's again a resistance. So, I, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, and I can see why some were bearish. I was still bullish because of the fact that I thought that it's really not able to break support so many days. And it looked to me more like a correction like this. Inverse head and shoulders. Four hour chart. Uh, yeah. Well, this more like a double bottom. Uh, but I can see, I can see what you mean. You meant more like maybe something like this, like that, or could be even like this, maybe. In the channel. Uh, let's see. Not sure. You're talking about inverse, right? So bullish upside pattern. Mm, not sure which one myself, but generally speaking, yes, we are kind of rounding like this, and we do have some some potential like left right shoulders like that so so i can i can see generally what you mean indeed um and therefore remain bullish despite the choppiness all right but the next confirmation would be a break above this resistance trend line like a good daily candle close i think uh with a break above this, I'm not sure if it happens today, but if it does, I think it would be a good breakout. So if it gets up in here, a bit of a retracement and a continuation. All right. It's a bit difficult for me to, it's difficult to ex explain it with regard to that inverse head and shoulders in words, I think. Uh, for you, Roy, I, I don't see it at this moment exactly, but I, I get generally, you know, with the formation that I think you're hinting at today. So let's see how far it can go. I, I think minimum should be 1295, uh, but maybe even up to 1320. Yeah, I was, I was waiting. Does it break or not? Adyen, that's the question. Let's take a look. Well, Adyen looked the best to be yesterday, but now it looks the, you know not that good anymore. It's just uh, not moving anywhere for quite a while. And maybe the support trend line, I don't know. It seems like a triangle at the moment. It was a good breakout and looked like you know, good continuation. Now it's making a, a bigger correction here. A bit tricky. The Aussie, not as weak as it looked like at the beginning of the week. So this week, a bit difficult to find trades that really go far. Um, pound today is an exception. A bit choppy week so far, but um, maybe the pound can save it if it continues it yet again. Ah, thank you, Roy. 22, 
2200 was very nice indeed definitely really uh we had a good week first week was good there were also a lot of trends so I, we were maybe a little bit lucky with that <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> but yeah it was nice though we had this this uh this uh this push up here which made things a little bit easier, of course. Last week uh, we had a little bit less, 500 pips, which still was still also nice. But yeah, that first week was very good because of multiple trends like this. That helps. But still, good, good to have it indeed. Uh, so we were happy with that. Thanks. This week is a little bit more difficult, as you maybe noticed. And it, it's just the market is a little bit stuck at the moment, except the pound that kind of freed itself a little bit, I think. Um, but uh, I think that continuations could occur on these pairs with, with the, the pound and the yen, I hope, and even the euro and the Aussie, but they are, they are a little bit, um, you know, making a bit correction at the moment. That's often happens when you have one or two pairs moving and the others are standing still because it's, otherwise there would be too much volatility if, you know, so. It looks like the euro and Aussie are now just waiting. Yesterday, the euro and odd were moving. The pound and yen were waiting. Now the pound and yen are moving, but and the euro and odd are waiting. It's just that when the euro and odd were moving yesterday, they didn't really move as far as, as I wish they would have gone. It didn't really have much punch. It didn't really have the, the move. The, it didn't move into the territory that I needed to get uh, some profits, uh, some take profits. And then it is looking at a little bit closer to take profit. So uh, we have similar styles, but also some differences. One of the advantages of looking at us both, because you can kind of, uh, you know, pick and choose which ones you like. But so now that is always aiming at closer targets typically. Uh, you know, that's good with rangy days, with trendy days, uh, then it's, it's it's a benefit for me because then I'm able to, to stay in longer typically. But if it doesn't go as far, then I you know sometimes get into some smaller losses or break evens and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. So that was the again. It could still break. I'm not saying it's impossible. With regard to the again that it cannot continue. But where is the again? It's it is taking its time. But I think there's still a good chance it might continue uh, if it breaks this uh, channel and bear flag. Well, if it doesn't happen today or tomorrow, then uh, I would be a bit cautious on Friday because then in that case, with regard to the RDN, there might be you know a continuation of this triangle there could be a bounce back up to this resistance here all right so it would be good to see the break soon otherwise might be a bit risky with this audience patterns we can see everywhere even on the four hour chart and the four hour chart it's it's not maybe as clear what the pattern is So if it's not clear, it doesn't hurt to look at a daily chart or sorry, one time frame higher just to get an idea about, uh, you know, what, what is the uh, overall structure of this uh, pair. And it looks like probably bearish because of the divergence that we have between these tops. If you don't see that, you can always add, you know, if you're not sure, you can always add the oscillator. And uh, definitely divergence there. Also some divergence to the upside though, between these bottoms. It's a bit choppy at this moment. Uh, if it does break to the upside, 
it could run into resistance if it breaks to the downside it could bump, bump into support so it's it's not really that that the creative of a currency pair at this moment i think probably better to to let it break to the upside try to find a reversal up in here as it uh, maybe uh makes it upside runs out of steam and boom falls something like the pound yen so anyhow with regard to patterns you will see patterns everywhere we you know you just look at the any time frame you'll see them uh 50 minute chart bullish momentum full flag uh continuation trend another correction line like this smaller flags like here here's another one with that break didn't go anywhere as you can see so you got to be careful when to take breaks of course more more bear flags in fact right there and even here flag upside triangle there uh, there we go big big bear flag in fact like this corrective trend line counter trend trend line here worth trading if you if you're in a downtrend trend line break good for uh, exiting with profit but you see we need these patterns everywhere you can draw these trend lines uh, a lot of different spaces here of course you got to know how to draw the trend line and stuff like that which trend lines to to use and ignore but i think you get the picture so <clears throat> very powerful tool look at patterns look at the good you know the candlestick breakout and typically it is more bounce depending on what time frame you look at it's typically it is a, a good reliable setup right not not always but from my point of view one of the better ways of, of tackling the markets do you have any questions specifically at this point let me grab a, uh, some water here first i'll wait if you have any questions These patterns really happen on all time frames. I mean, I'm not saying that you need to take every pattern on a 50 minute chart. You know, you could get yourself into a counter trend trade like Roy was saying that that could be dangerous, even if you get the breakout with the trend. Uh, here, you know, what, setups like this, when you have momentum, correction, and you get a breakout candle like that, that typically is with the trend, or at least the intraday trend. So that's pretty good. But if you're looking at a breakout like this, and, and you take this breakout, that's not good because you do have a lot of momentum to the downside here. And, and that, depending on the circumstances, I don't want to rule it out because it could be a higher time frame. This could be a retracement on the 50 minute chart, but everything else is an uptrend on the hourly, four hour, daily chart. And this break is, is perfect as it flies up. So there is context needed. But generally speaking, without that context, just looking at this momentum, this break to the upside would seem dangerous, despite the fact that we had a good break candle above the 50-minute trend line. Right? So, the, of course, higher time frames with candles have more value. Of course, context is important. Multiple time frames is important. Understanding the market structure, support, resistance, trends, momentum. Definitely very important. But if you have that understanding, then yes, you can look at lower time frames, higher time frames, medium time frames, look for patterns, look for candles, breaking those patterns. And uh, that should work 
pretty well, typically. All right, just to try to be careful with trading a breakout against the trend, unless you have more confidence about a bigger reversal. So, yeah, be careful with that. Keep an eye, be flexible with the trade. So you might have a good breakout candle like the pound dollar had, but it doesn't go anywhere. So after a few hours like this or a few candles, it's still not going our way. Don't hesitate to reduce the risk, lock in profits, move to break even and stuff like that. Just because there was a breakout doesn't mean that there will be a continuation. All right. Well, some of these uh, tools that you might see, the pivot point to the Keltner, just in case you're wondering, you can get that and the mini terminal as part of a plugin of uh, MetaTrader Supreme Edition, part of MT4 or MT5. And there are 60 plus extra features for that. So check out this page, plugin here for MetaTrader called Supreme Edition. Definitely worth your, uh, your time. I hope that the market will change and we'll be catching another thousand pips or so uh, on these moves. But for the moment, uh, you know, it's a bit slower than usual, I would say. But I do think that the pound and the yen could be ready for more trend setups, hopefully. And even the euro and odd, but um, and New Zealand, but waiting for a little bit of more info on that first. I think for the moment, the trade that has the most opportunity in the near future, I think, could be uh, the pounds as they correct and continue, in my view. All right, now with regard to one more thing, regard to patterns, and then I think we'll wrap it up, is that um, they don't have to be perfect. And, you know, you just never, it sometimes, you know, price exceeds a little bit to trend lines. Um, it's something that you just want to gauge or understand the flow of price. What is the correction saying? And do we get a breakout? So maybe pound dollar, for instance, it's, I didn't trade it this week, but here, for instance, flow is up, correction, break is up, and continuation up too. I didn't trade this one, but just to give you an idea, this is very useful. And this is a good breakout candle. And we should be patient with the trade when we get a good breakout candle. Especially, you know, if we get a continuation. We got to get either a continuation or either break, you know, another smaller pattern in continuation. You don't want to see a break and down like this, right? If you see, see too many bearish candles here, you might want to think about getting out for break even or a small loss. Yeah, that's actually a very good idea, Roy. And doing that is good going back into the past and do some old fashioned paper trading which means just grab your chart and, and, and go back like this and uh, just stop somewhere and, and look at these patterns, go one candle at a time forward, try to recognize patterns, try to make some, count some unofficial trades that you take, not, you cannot take trades in the past of course, but you would just say, okay, I enter here and I have stop loss here and Based on one time frame, I know it's limited TP here, but it really helps, you know, by going in the past, taking these demo setups or, or past setups, but really taking these setups as if they were real, treating them as they are real, it does give a, an extra learning. It does help with recognizing patterns, looking at breakouts and trading, trying to trade and, and learn from that. Definitely. Very valuable. And I, I guess I've mentioned that before, so some, most of you already know this, but um, definitely uh, a good uh, 
good activity, especially on the weekends when the market is closed and plenty of time, you know, to, to feel to not to feel that you're missing something as the market develops. Weekends are, are really good for that. All right. Well, wish you a good trading. It wraps it up uh, for today. And we'll be back uh, tomorrow with regard to new webinars. Just check out Education Forex and CD webinars for tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central European time, 4 p.m. GMT time. And uh, wish you all good trading. Cheers.